It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. Hey, Nelly, sweet moves. Actually, stop, because at 2300 degrees and all that smoke, steam, and red hot steel, not even naked Nelly could do what our guy does. It takes a fully clothed real man to make railroad tracks, and this very real man can make 339 feet of it. Like on his own, dude. In the Vost Alpine factory in Austria, those crazy yodelers have built one of the most advanced railroad mills in the whole wide world. Every year they produce enough tracks to build a railroad from Miami to Seattle. They don't, but they could. So how are those freakishly long rail tracks actually made? Oh, it's so easy, you're gonna kick yourself. It all starts with ultra pure steel made by blowing oxygen gas over molten pig iron at supersonic speeds to burn off any impurities. I know, right? All this time I could have been making frickin' railway tracks. The ultra pure steel is formed into giant rectangular metal bars known as blooms which then gets squirted with water at over 3,700 PSI. That's more pressure than a bullet hit in its target. Imagine that as a super soaker in a water fight. <laughs> okay, maybe not. So the water jets strip off any iron oxide that's formed on the steel surface, leaving the bars of metal ready to be shaped into railroad tracks. Dude, it's just like making brownies. The steel is still over 2300 degrees. That's hotter than molten lava. So you really don't want to touch one. You could seriously stick to it and sizzle like a big ol' wiener. And because it's so hot, it's also soft as sh Soft enough to be passed back and forth through heavy rollers, which squeeze the rectangular steel into T-shaped tracks, and stretch the rails out to 393 feet long. It's just like making pasta, big pasta, that trains can go on. It takes 10 to 14 passes to produce each length of track, and this finely honed machine never stops. High above the master of, like, everything, sends the 8-ton rail shuttling back and forth with a nonchalant flick of the wrist. It says, flick, hey machine, make train tracks. Get the timing wrong and he'd end up with the mother of all pile-ups. Tons of red hot steel bent out of shape. But this place is so efficient that it never happens. There's not a single Eiffel Tower in Austria. All those thousands of passengers and all that freight, that's going to wear the steel away and start to cause cracks. The answer, the answer, hardened the head of the rail track until it's three times as hard as regular steel. I did it to my fist. You want a piece of me? The track is air cooled to 1500 degrees and lowered into a dip tank where the rail is steadily cooled at a rate of four degrees a second. This produces a fine, tight grain inside the steel, ensuring this track could still be in use 70 years from now. You still want a piece of me, huh? Once the steel is cooled to 140 degrees, it's passed through horizontal and vertical straightening machines, and 393 feet of railroad is almost finished. But nothing leaves here without a close inspection. Scanners check for surface deformations and hidden microfractures within the metal. Visual inspections double check the computer's work, cause there ain't nothing better than eyeballs. Once finished, there's just one more problem. Getting the tracks to where they're needed. The answer, to move them by rail, of course. Choo choo, better be going now. Ha <laughs> ha. Go on, get out of here, you crazy train fruitcakes.